Hey everybody, it's Travis speaking. Last time we took a look at creating parts and looking a little bit more deeper into the model browser. Today I'd like to look at creating assembly files and some of the added features that you get in an assembly file. So we'll come up to our new dialog box and we'll select assembly. And notice along the bottom I've got my third file open here. So to start an assembly you need to place some parts. So what I'm going to do is bring a couple carriers in from before. And I'll use this Travis carrier. I'll say open. Now the first part is grounded. Once it's in it can't move. Any of the parts that I add afterwards simply by left clicking these can be moved. So you'll notice that when you highlight it it turns blue. This one can't move no matter where I move my mouse and this one can. So what I want to do is bring in a couple more objects or I could make something on the fly using a design accelerator. So if I come over to the design tab and I use the shaft tool it's going to ask me to save my file. I'm just going to overwrite this assembly file one and notice now it's placing a shaft so I'm just going to click that and say OK for the time being and it's going to create some some parts so it's got a sub assembly and this shaft so we'll say OK and it does a little thinking and there's the shaft that I've created so if I want to edit this shaft I can simply come in here into my model browser highlight it and right click and say edit using design accelerator and it brings up that first dialog box that we were looking at in the first place and it allows me to make some changes so if I come here to the cylinder I can make some changes I know that it's four inches in length but I need the diameter to be different I need it to be in millimeters for first but I'm going to say 48 millimeters and see what happens it should translate over and the length, well I don't care that it says inches, but we'll just switch it over anyway. I'll say 100 millimeters and say OK. So it made a minor adjustment there. Now we'll come back to this chambered part here. We'll just do that as well, just for the sake of illustration. So right now it's saying it's a 3 inch is the, the second diameter, and the first diameter is 4 inches, and then this whole aspect of this shaft is four inches in length. So let's change this to eight inches and we'll make that two inches. Let's make that three inches to start. So you'll see that our design accelerator is highlighting our part and this is not really intended but for the sake of the tutorial you see what we're doing. So to get all these to come together you use something called constraints. So we'll go back to our assemble tab and start with constraining. So the first and most common type of constraint is a mate constraint. When you apply a mate constraint it simply lines up two faces, two edges, or different axis. So for example if I want this this carrier here to share this same axis I would simply select this axis on my shaft and this axis for my carrier. I'll hit OK and apply it. And you'll hear that popping noise to know that you've actually placed the component properly. Now notice when I drag that part it goes through but no matter where I move this to my cursor it won't go off that axis. I can spin it and I can move it up and down the axis but I can't take it off so what I've done is eliminated a degree of freedom. So again notice if I select this part I can't move it because it's grounded. But these ones here I can. So one way to find out what degree of freedom is left is by coming to the view tab and clicking on degrees of freedom and you'll see what's happened is I've only got one degree on the shaft now and I still have three. That means that if I select these I can rotate them around and there's no problem moving there anywhere in the model. 
but what I want to do is make a change and put this one up close to this car car carrier and use some similar faces. So again, we'll go back to the assemble, choose constrain, and this time I'm going to use the faces instead of the axis to make some, some constraints here. And you'll see some of these degrees of freedom disappear. So I'll select this face first, and then this face, and notice how they come together. If I say OK, there's some degrees of freedom missing here. So you can see this one in red. But this one's still free to move. So in a way, it's hierarchical. If I move this feature, the other one will move with it. But this one can't move off of that plane. They'll always be together. So just for the sake of illustration, you see that it looks as though it's coming off that face. But it'll always be on that same plane if you're looking at it uh, directly, directly head on. Now if I wanted these to be lined up and, and eliminate another degree of freedom, the way I would go about it is by selecting a common edge. So I could use my mate constraint again, and this time instead of selecting an edge, or sorry, a face, I'll just select an edge. So you can see I have a face that's bordered by two edges or just the one edge. So I'll select that edge and I'll come navigate over to my other car carrier and I'll select that outside edge. I'll hit OK and now these aren't going anywhere without the other. Can I rotate them? Yes, because there's still that degree of freedom left but we've eliminated two degrees of freedom so they'll always stay together in one spot. You'll also notice that popping noise and that'll always tell you that your constraint has actually worked. You can do constraints in a number of ways. If we bring back the constraint dialog box you'll see that you have motion constraints, transitional constraints, and constraint sets. Some constraints actually work in tandem so if you use an insert constraint it uses a axis as well as a face so it actually applies two constraints with one action so that's a basic of constraints and design accelerators thanks for watching